It's often the little things, small behaviors, that can change our lives. That's the power of a financial edge. I'm Ed Meek. I'm a financial advisor with a passion to help you retire early, save more, and live better. Welcome to Ed's Edge, the podcast to help you live the life you've always wanted. Boom! Overnight, you just received an inheritance. Overnight, something just happened. You work for a company and you got the stock exploded and you got a big payout. Overnight, you just got a big chunk of money. In, in one of these scenarios, this could happen. What do I do now? This is like not slow, long-term retirement planning. This is like life-changing. All of a sudden, things change. What do you do? Yeah. You know, it makes me think of a story. Um, this was probably 10 years ago. I was sitting at a Scott Trade office, uh, Scott Trade investment office, and this, this uh, couple came in husband and wife, uh, the son, the husband was the son of a, a individual who had deceased and he had no clue, um, how much mom and dad had before they had passed. Mm -hmm. And he was a, he was a, you know, middle-class worker, you know, very diligent. And, uh, you know, I had no clue that he didn't know as well. He comes in and he's like, yeah, I'm here to collect them. The beneficiaries of the accounts, I confirm they are. And he says, yeah, you know, can you print out the statements? We'll figure out what titling. So I print out the statements. I plop them on his desk. Three point two million dollars, and he had no idea. Had no clue. He's in his fifties. No clue. What, what what did he look like? So <laughs> he goes. He looks at it, and he looks up at me, and he looks back down. Like, is this real? Or, or James, are you lying to me? And I just give him a little smile. Yeah, that's that's the oh, wow. amount of assets. Yeah. And so it, it's it's he was pleasantly surprised. And when you say yeah, overnight that happened to him. Mm -hmm. It, it's a happy problem, but now it's a problem. It's still a problem because we have to figure out, okay, now what? And that's what we want to talk about today. Right. The, I mean, there's this great wealth transfer that's happening. People who are of the baby boomer and older generation are passing down a tremendous amount of money. And if you happen to be one that will or that is receiving some type of inheritance, whether it's just a smaller amount that's going to make somewhat of a difference or, you know, you know, you're fortunate enough to get something like this gentleman. There's, there's a number of different things you really need to take into account. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when that happens. And so we're going to discuss kind of some of the things to consider, some of the things you should look at, who you should talk to. The first thing is talk to the estate planning attorney that either drew up the documents and if they're not around anymore find an estate planning attorney they're the experts that help draw up like how is the money supposed to be passed on sometimes it's passed on directly to you like you receive free and clear easy right no questions it's a retirement asked. account you're the beneficiary of it or you get a piece of it but what if it's a what if it's in a trust what if it's a home what if it's real estate what if it's something else cars so you want to make sure you understand how it all works Yes. So an estate planning attorney is an expert at putting those together and helping people distribute those in the proper fashion. So that's important. Another person that's key is the accountant. Why are we talking about accountants when we're talking about inheriting money? Because the taxes are monstrous. <laughs> like if you withdraw this money or receive it a certain way, it will dramatically affect you currently right then, but also later on. Yeah. And, and the, last, the last thing and the last person who I think you should see as someone who's a financial advisor, really a certified financial planner. And you could see this chart that I put up. James has not seen this chart, but it's a picture of a typical accountant. It's a picture of a typical estate planning attorney. Mm -hmm. And it's a picture of me. <laughs> well, it's a picture of what I want to be. It's a picture of <laughs> Thor, as you can see. And I believe that if you have the right kind of certified financial planner, it'd be like the God of Thunder helping you. <laughs> Obviously, you get the gist. Get the team together and just make sure you understand what's happening. That's right. I had close similar similarities there to Thor. I'll give you credit for that. So. <laughs> yeah, right. It's kind of like, you know, I mean, you might need to hit the Liam, gym a little it's Liam Hensworth, right? <laughs> or is it Chris? Which one? It's it's Chris, Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth who's yeah. playing Thor, right? And, you know, I mean, 
long blonde locks, right? Just like you. Just like me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know Catherine, you know, thinks I'm just as good looking as him. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, all right, let's get right into it. So you've, you've got this chunk of money and you've talked to these people and you've settled your estate and you feel good about that. But are we done? We're not done. We're, no, we're not done. What do we need to do next? Um, we highly recommend, this has nothing to do with any of the numbers. We highly recommend, regardless of how much you inherit, after it's all distributed, take a step back. Uh, don't do anything right away. Why do we recommend that? The reason we recommend that is you, there's an emotional time with the passing, especially if it's an inheritance. There might be a, a positive emotion if if you won the lottery or you know just got that stock or what have you. So take a step back. Let let um, your emotions get out of the way, and and really um, evaluate your situation first. That's step one. Well, what happens is, and we've seen this sometimes, right? When people inherit a, a chunk of money, all of a sudden their mind just changes. It's kind of like winning the lottery. Even though they might have known they got it, all of a sudden if they're getting a, a, a money that's going to substantially change their overall kind of assets, it's going to make them go, maybe I can retire now. Maybe I can retire soon. And, you know, we don't want to like quit the job right away because we got to take into account everything. I'm not saying you won't, but I'm saying let's just, if you work with the professionals, you kind of look at everything in the big picture and understand what are all the different things that are going to happen when you get this investment, when you get this investment, it's going to help you understand and make those decisions without an emotional, emotional knee-jerk reaction. Yeah, yeah. So take going into step number two, take inventory of your assets. Um, you know, let's, let's evaluate what we have. I mean, you can see, I, I put together just an example. This is a personal financial statement yep. that we do for clients and it just lists everything out. It shows how much you have in the bank, checking in your investments, in homes, in crypto, if you own any crypto in your, it, it, any kind of, uh, debt you might have like a mortgage. Do you own anything on it? And so sometimes people are like, oh, I received money. I've got this. I'm going to pay off the house. I'm going to pay off the car. Well, what if you get a mortgage that you're, um, you know, like nowadays, while we're talking today, interest rates are much higher. If you locked into uh, a mortgage and you're only paying two and a half, three percent on your mortgage and you take money out of investments, like even conservative investments today are paying four or five percent and they're hardly fluctuating at all. Why would you take money out of an investment that's paying you that and pay off a mortgage that's only paying that's only charging you two and a half percent? You want to make sure you just kind of don't do the knee jerk reaction and you want to look at everything, both what's my financial statement on my own? What am I receiving? And now that it's going to be combined, what is it going to look like and what should I do? Yep. Yep. You're taking assets and liabilities. You're taking inventory of everything. Mm -hmm. And they're just like we mentioned earlier, they're, they're taxed differently. So that money you receive that's not in a retirement account, we're looking at this, the three buckets that, you know, we keep showing you that bucket on the left. If you, if there's any money in that, like a home stocks that are not in retirement accounts, all of those come to you as is, and there's no taxes usually when you get those. You just get them as is. And so if you sell them, then you won't have to pay taxes. But if you receive them inside that middle bucket, you want to make sure you don't pull it out too quickly because you got to pay taxes on all of that. And if you receive them in that right bucket, that's like gold. That right bucket is the, usually the Roth IRAs. Those things are so important that you want to touch those last usually. You don't want to pull the money out of that. Yeah, yeah. And so we've got, you know, this inventory, we've got this asset mix. We, we understand how everything could be taxed down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and we look at it and you want to evaluate what's your financial health? You know, how do things look? How's my emergency account looking? How's my retirement looking? I have kids. How's mm -hmm. their college funding, if that's important right. to me, looking? You kind of want to assess it non-monetarily and just how do I feel about where I'm at in all these stages? Well, you might have been planning out, like, let's say... Let's say you receive it and your kids haven't started college yet or they're in college and you had already planned out like I'm going to pay for college or I'm going to help them. They're going to do that. You know, the children are going to pay for this. I mean, it depends on your situation a certain way. But if all of a sudden this changes everything, then you have to take a step back and go, you know, some people are like, I want to pay for half my kids college. I want to pay for all my kids college. All of a sudden you might be like, you know what, because I got this inheritance now I'm able to help them more. This Grandma and grandpa now maybe will help the children a little bit more than we thought. And I'd like to do that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So just take a step back and it might change the way that you were doing all your retirement planning going in. Right. And timing wise. Based on what's important to you, you can prioritize these goals and see where that inheritance fits in the, the new the new pot. Um, and so really, the, the last topic we wanted to share, uh, once you figure all that out, again, financial planners can help you. Certain um, accountants can help you with the taxes. After you figure all this out, you want to pay it forward. <laughs> we highly recommend you pay it forward. What do we mean? Doesn't mean you're gifting other people necessarily. You're a your estate plan now, right? If you mm. got that inheritance and and they set it you up well, your situ your financial situation changes. You want to make sure that you create your own estate plan, right? With the new environment that you're under. Maybe you, maybe you had one, right? Maybe you were proactive or you had maybe wills and trusts, but it might look a little different. Yeah. If you if all of a sudden your financial situations changed, yeah. You know, an example might be if you if you like have your estate plan set up where um, you have a nice sum of money, you have a few children, they all they all they're all in their twenties and they receive this. But what if all of a sudden it's life changing money? And do you want your, in my example, twenty two year old son to receive like if I received a big chunk of money suddenly? I don't know of anything that's happening but let's just say that happened do i all of a sudden if i just happen to suddenly pass after that then he gets you know nathan you know like do i want nathan to get a huge chunk of money at age 22 i love you nathan but you know probably not all right away maybe i change my estate plan so he gets it in a couple chunks along with my daughters yeah Yeah. and so everybody's going to do it differently but you may want to change your estate plan if this happens to you yeah yeah okay good point good point um so let's summarize real quick. So you, you receive this chunk of money and um, often it ties to some emotional piece, whether it's good or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, we highly recommend you, know, outside, you get those professionals to square everything away first. Then you take a step back and just evaluate your situation. Yeah. Look at everything with the new landscape. And then the last part is take action based on the goals that you will now have um, based on what you have going on. And, and, and in that order, so important. Yeah. I mean, a bonus is if you feel comfortable, we highly suggest include your kids on some of this. If they're going to receive something, it's good for them or whoever's going to inherit this. It's good for them to know how things are going to play out. Even if you don't want to tell them all the specifics, like obviously that couple did not want their son to know that he was receiving that, but it might've changed how he was living his life if he would have known, right? Mm -hmm. And and who knows? We don't know that. But it does help your children or the people who inherit it know how to plan for their situation when they do receive money in the future and how to help you along the way. So it's a bonus and it's something that you should strongly consider if you feel comfortable at least letting them know some things. Well said. All right. With all that, being said, now that we've talked about this wonderful event, uh, receiving a chunk of money, let's talk about another way we can spend that money through Ed's food for thought. I like how you said that. <laughs> this is a that's going to be my number one goal. Th- when this I is a way that this this is like this is like a, a double bonus here because okay. you know what's my favorite dessert. Uh, I don't know what your favorite dessert oh, is. Come on, man, ice cream, you know, right? I thought shakes. I was, was going to say cookies at first, but uh, no, no, okay. No. So I, I, uh, this summer, I can't even believe, like, I can't even believe, like, I never thought about this myself. This summer, Catherine and I are playing pickleball. We meet this couple, and this couple is uh, very nice, and somehow they bring up. Uh, they they make homemade ice cream. A couple does. They do, right. Mm. And they're like, yeah, we just bought this homemade ice cream maker and it's incredible. You know, it makes the best ice cream. It's so good. And so the double bonus is you can make homemade ice cream, which we now bought one and we do it now. You and bought a machine for I'm bought a machine. We're gonna okay. we're gonna put down the machine and the machine and the machine comes with directions. And you don't have to buy this machine, but this one's pretty good. Okay. So you're uh, gonna share the machi- machine with I'm everyone. gonna share the machine with you guys. You're not receiving royalties to do this, I no. take it. <laughs> uh-huh. And the double bonus is, you know, ice cream ain't cheap, right? So yeah. 
it's actually saves you a little bit of money. Nice. And and you get when you make it, it comes out kind of like Dairy Queen ice cream. Oh. So if you like Dairy Queen ice cream, then you can eat it that way. But if you just put it in the freezer for like two or three hours or longer, it comes out as regular ice cream. Uh. And uh, and then you can make it. They there's a variety of ways of making. It. You just put whatever you want in there: Reese's, chocolate, strawberries, whatever. But I suggest considering if you like ice cream, doing the homemade ice cream. It's a nice treat. Interesting. Like that might be a nice uh, project for Theo and I down the road. Oh so. yeah, he'd love it. Right. Yeah. yeah. What kid doesn't? All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah, thanks. We'll talk to you next time. This podcast represents an assessment of the market environment at a specific point in time, should not be relied upon as investment advice, and is not intended to predict or depict performance of any investment. Any specific recommendations or comparisons that are made as to particular securities or strategies are for illustrative purposes only and are not meant as investment advice for any viewer.